Don't you love fall? Lizzie asked Miranda and Gordo one early autumn morning as they kicked through a pile of leaves on the lawn of Hillsridge Junior High. Lizzie took a deep breath of the crisp September air. Leaves turning colors, ducks flying south. The return of corduroy, Miranda added, gesturing to her silent new red corduroy hip huggers. The cycles of life reminding us that everything must change. Gordo broke off abruptly at the sight of Kate Sanders. She was heading straight for Lizzie and her friends and she was leading a small parade. Marching behind Kate was the entire cheerleading squad, followed by a group of eight eighth-grade boys. As usual, Kate was dressed in her adult clothes, a blue turtleneck mini-dress with her long blonde hair carefully curled and pinned up in a barrette. Everyone else had on black and white t-shirts with the Kate the Party printed across the, shirt, the chest. Here's Lizzie and her little friends, whoever and whatever, Kate said, flipping her hands indifferently at Miranda and Gordo. And some things will never change, Gordo said, gesturing to the always insulting pom-pom queen. My mom is making me invite the whole class to my birthday party. Losers, too, Kate informed Lizzie and her friends so they didn't get the wrong idea. She snapped her fingers over her shoulder. Hit it, she told the three boys behind her. Suddenly, the boys burst into a capella harmony. Kate will see you at the door. Kate will free you. Have some more. Birthday cake and hit the dance floor. Lizzie, Miranda, and Gordo couldn't believe they were went witnessing a singing party invitation who does that rsvp rsvp the boy saying it's gonna be off the heaves putting their heads close together two of the boys began to chant the kate the kate the kate the kate while the other boys sang the party the party the party the party the party if they keep this up they're going to see the breakfast kate snapped her fingers again and the boys stopped the cheerleaders pulled colorful, sparkly invitation cards from baskets on their arms and tossed them carefully at Lizzie and her friends. Then Kate and her group moved on. Miranda looked down at the card in her hand. She's turning 14, she asked. For the second year in a row, or is it the third, Lizzie asked. She has a driver's license. I've seen it, Miranda informed them. Lizzie's eyes opened wide. Really? No, Miranda spoke. But it's a really good rumor to start, huh? As they turned to head into the school, a group of kids walked by waving their invitation and chanting, the Kate, the Kate, the party, the Kate, the party. Lizzie and their, her friends stopped to watch them pass. Impressive, said Gordo sarcastically. She's got the whole school chanting her name. Lizzie held up her invitation to rip it in half. I wouldn't go to this party if it were the last party, she started to say. Just then they passed two boys holding invitations. Last year she gave out cell phones in, a, in the goodie bags, one of the boys said. Lizzie looked at him, looked at her invitation, then looked at Miranda and Gordo and grinned. I'm there, she said. Me too, said Miranda. Gordo leaned over to the boy and asked, did that include long distance? The boy shrugged as if it were obvious. Duh, he said. Chapter 2 Mom, be reasonable, Lizzie cried. Can't we talk about this? Lizzie and her mother were standing in the kitchen making dinner. Lizzie had casually mentioned Kate's party to her mother when she gotten home from school that afternoon. Little had she known that it was going to turn into a two-hour battle with her mother, Mrs. Strickness. Mrs. No Fun McGuire. Talk away, Mrs. McGuire said calmly, but you're not going to a party where there's no chaperone. I repeat, for the 900th time, there will be a chaperone, Lizzie said. And for the 900th time, Kate's 18-year-old cousin, Amy, who plays in a band, doesn't count, Mrs. McGuire told her firmly. Why not? Kate's mom thinks it's okay, Lizzie pointed out. Kate's mom and I have very different ideas of what's appropriate, Mrs. McGuire replied. Pulling a package of tomatoes out of the refrigerator. That's because she trusts Kate. She trusts Kate, Lizzie snapped at her mother's back. Mrs. McGuire rolled around. Elizabeth Brooke McGuire. That tone of voice has grounded written all over it, she said, pointing a warning finger. Maintain McGuire calmly explained to her how important this is to you. But, Mom, everybody's going to be there, Lizzie whined in a last-ditch attempt. Everybody accepts an appropriate chaperone and you, her mother replied sternly. She smiled at Lizzie. Honey, why are you in such a hurry to grow up? She asked gently. Just enjoy being a kid. How can I enjoy, enjoy being a kid when I can't go to co any cool parties? Suddenly the front door slammed. From the front hallway, Matt shouted, Mom, Mom, we're going to be on TV. He ran into the kitchen, followed by Mr. McGuire. Lizzie folded her arms at the sight of her spastic little brother. Is there going to be a new reality show, she asked. Real stories of the really clueless? You know, that's that was ex actually very, very clever. When I'm a big star, maybe you can write for me, Matt said sarcastically. 
That'd be great, Lizzie said sarcastically, but I won't be able to go with you to any cool premiere parties because that won't be chaperoned. She glared at her mother one last time, then turned on her heel and stomped out of the room. Mr. McGuire looked at his wife and raised his eyebrows. What was that all about? She shook her head and smiled. Once again, I am the worst mother in the world, she told him. Cool, because I've been, I've just been out being fun dad, Mr. McGuire replied. Only the fun funniest, Matt told his mother. You're looking at the next spokes family for cardio punch sports drink. This casting lady in the mall picked us to be in a commercial, Mr. McGuire explained. Mrs. McGuire's eyes brightened. Oh, spokes family? Where do we go? she asked. Matt and his father glanced at each other. Actually, Matt said slowly when they said, Spokes family, what they meant was Spokes dad and Spokes Matt. Oh, Mrs. McGuire's face fell. So they don't need a mom? Sorry, it's a guy thing. Matt patted his mother's back consolingly and went off to the living room to watch TV. But you on camera? Mrs. McGuire shook her head doubtfully, remembering their wedding day. You forgot to say I do when you saw Cousin Reby with the video camera, she reminded him. I didn't forget, Mr. McGuire said. His wife folded her arms and cocked one eyebrow. I was blinded by your beauty, he said weakly. Oh, please, his wife said. You flinched from your, for your driver's license picture. Look, it's something Matt really wants to do, Mr. McGuire told her. I can get over being a little camera shy for one day. That's why I am the fun dad. Woohoo, woohoo. Whooping it up, Mr. McGuire headed off to the living room to watch TV with Matt. Mrs. McGuire pursed her lips with annoyance. Just when she liked to be the fun parent. The next day at school, Lizzie and her friends compared notes on what their mothers had said about Kate's party. She started with my full name. She finished with enjoy your childhood, fill in the blanks, Lizzie reported as they walked into the quad during the break. My mom gave me, I don't agree with Kate's mom on how to raise children, Miranda said, throwing her hands into the air in exasperation. Raise like we're chickens or something. Gordo coolly tipped back his head and drained the last of his soda from its can. My mother said it was okay. What? Lizzie and Miranda whipped their heads around to stare at him. It's kind of depressing, really, Gordo said, perching on the edge of, of a table. Do I think I'm such a good kid that I can never get into trouble? Yep, Miranda said. I can make trouble, Gordo told them. I've got a dark side. I can disrespect the common areas. I can act without regard for the safety of others. To make his point, he held up his soda can and casually flung it over his shoulder. The can flew through the air and hit a boy standing across the cot. Ow, the boy yelped, rubbing his head. Gordo gasped and spun around. I'm so sorry, he called. He glanced back at Miranda and Lizzie, then added, Sorry, but bad. Turning back to the boy, he cried, Can I get you a towel? He snatched up a napkin from the table and scurried over to help him. As the student fended off Gordo's attempts to dab soda off his head, Lizzie turned back to Miranda. I'm not going giving up on this, she said. We need to go to that party. Everybody's going to be there. The two girls stared at each other in silence. Why should we have to suffer to act? to exercise our constitutional right to the pursuit of happiness, Lizzie said at last. It's positively un-American. Miranda looked at her thoughtfully. How about this? Instead of not going to the party, we just go, she said. Lizzie frowned confused. But our parents already said we couldn't. We do it anyway, Miranda explained. We just don't tell them. Lizzie stared at her friend for a moment, surprised. This sounds like it involves a little bit of lying and deception, but a whole lot of get it going to the party. Then Lizzie smiled and took Miranda's arm. I'm listening, she said.